I imagine a lot of you are confused about the idea of making a photograph without a camera. Or perhaps this, uh, this old process, the daguerreotype from the uh, 1840s. And the, these are definitely uh, questions with my work using the photogram, the picture without a camera. But I find all of these technical questions to be secondary to the idea of an image. And so I encourage people to look at my photographs as if they were paintings. I, I started an investigation of photography about 20 years ago, originally using a what we call a normal camera, a Japanese camera, a German camera. And I started, I, I would say, uh, abusing it. I produced some pictures in that way. And then I made my own camera, pinhole camera. And then I discovered that I didn't need a camera at all with the photogram. So these pictures, most of these pictures are photograms. And it's as if we don't need the outside world anymore to make a photograph. I should say, to take a photograph. Normally with a camera, we bring an image from the outside world into the camera, into the dark space. But with these pictures, I've gone into the dark space, and I've, I've made the picture rather than taken the picture. The, these pictures on the wall behind you, made with uh, babies, the baby is in a shallow tray of water on top of the photographic paper. And the baby's moving. Each baby moves in its own unique way and moves the water in its own unique way. That event is recorded with a flash of light. It's yellow light because I want the light to be yellow. I, it's a picture of a baby, but it's also a picture of a baby as a metaphor. And most of these pictures, I think of them as metaphor. This picture on the wall uh, in the corner is made with a snake swimming through water. So it's a snake swimming in water, and at the same time, it's, it's what the snake represents. So the snake is metaphor. On this wall, we have these three pictures. Um, the two on the left are called Details of Love, and the picture in the center is called Love. And it's made with these two rabbits with their intestines uh, removed. And the intestines have had a uh, chemical reaction with the chemistry of the photographic paper to produce these uh, vivid colors. So in a way, this picture here, a de which is a detail of love, is really uh, about this. It's about how the two people slash rabbit are joined together. And this, this is, a, this is a, a join with intestine, but I, the intestine is really a metaphor for an emotional connection between two people. And, and here, again, is a detail of love, and this is also a, a kind of reconceptualization of, of, of how two, two entities, two humans, two rabbits here, but two humans are joined together, or could be joined together. So you have this vertical axis, which is what this is. So, you know, we, I think that all of us in the people that we know in our lives, the people that we're, so, we're connected to, are joined um, internally, emotionally, in a variety of ways. So this is my attempt to uh, depict that photographically. Someone. The, the rabbit theme has carried uh, from this, this work is from 92, and the rabbit theme carried into a newer, a newer body of work for me called My Ghost. The rabbit became the animal that I used in these pictures because it is uh, incredibly symbolically absorbent. And when I started that work, I, I didn't know that I was going to use a rabbit, but um, the rabbit was perfect, and 
Um, I, I, I guess primarily it, it, it stands in as a fertile person. So, someone asked me if the rabbit in the other room had anything to do with Playboy magazine. And, and, and truly it does actually because I, I think those, those uh, sexy girls, you know, an ab absolute image of, uh, of fertility. So my, my rabbit's the same. All rabbits are the same. The, the daguerreotype is, is the first commercial photographic process. It was invented in the 1840s in Paris. And in a way, it's, it's strange because I, I feel that it's really the, the Rolls Royce of, of photographic processes. And it, 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 it was um, very, very popular. Uh, and millions of daguerreotypes were made, particularly in America. What makes it so unusual from the other photographic processes is that it's on metal. It's a chemical reaction on the surface of polished silver. And the, 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 uh, the polished silver is exposed to the vapors of iodine and bromine, which creates a light sensitive film on the surface of the silver. I mean, just a, just a dust of, of, of light sensitivity. Then, then you can expose the plate to light, either in a camera or, in the case of these pictures here, as a photogram. So the object has been placed on the daguerreotype plate, which is something that no one did historically. That, that, that I, I think I may have been the first person to do that, as strange as it is, because you know, someone could have done it then, but no one seems to have ever seen one. Um, and then also historically, this is an enormous scale to make a daguerreotype. Because it was a portrait medium, the, the ch it's a very uncontrollable process. The, the, the coating with the, the, the sensitizing and also the development in the mercury vapor. It's all really a strange and difficult process. So when you're making portraits, you don't want any mistakes. So historically, they made them small so you could guarantee economically that you would make some money from the portrait because there wouldn't be a blob in the person's eye or something. But so today, you know, with a different aesthetical uh, need, I, I can accept those what were imperfections and I can explore those imperfections. For instance, the blue, the quality of blue that you see in these images. Historically, the blue images would have been discarded. Blue comes from overexposure. So if someone was wearing a white shirt in a portrait, it, it might go blue, or the whites of their eyes would go blue, or the book they were holding would go blue. That was considered a reject. I love that blue. I love that quality of blue, and it's partly why I became interested in the daguerreotype. I was very impressed by the story that you have photographed your nanny and that that seemingly was the beginning of your photography. Do you want to tell this story again? Why did you photograph your nanny? Thomas, I have practically no memory of that. Um, I, I think my mother had, I'd, ins I'd insisted that my mother buy me a camera cheap camera in a yeah. department store, supermarket. And I had this camera. I probably saw, I had seen her taking photographs, so mm -hmm. I wanted a camera. And, mm -hmm. and that was in Hyde Park? It's in a park called St. James's Park. It's St. in James. London, central London. And, and she was stretching her arm out and... I, you know, we used to go and feed the birds in the park. Yeah. So, um, I would have asked her to pose with the food for the bird. Yeah. And uh, when the bird was coming, I would make the picture. Right. So it has been told you. I mean, you have been shown the photograph and you 
you got the story later on. I, I was looking through some old photographs and I came across that one ah. and I turned it around and on the back was written, you know, taken by Adam, 1964, St. James's Park. Mm -hmm. so, so it was a shock. It was a tremendous shock to see that picture because of, because of the motifs. So you actually saw the photo after you have uh, done the shots with the birds again? Yeah. That's yeah. where the shock came from. Right. Because I realized that I'd made the picture again. Yeah. Unconsciously. So there is this wonderful picture of water behind us. And if you come into the space, it is as if you really see water almost, almost smashed at you. Yeah. You, you know, I don't, I, when I look at these works, actually, I don't, I don't see water myself. Mm -hmm. I used water, but to me they're, a picture, they're just a picture of, e picture of energy. So, and because we, there are these three moments, I mean, I, I, I can look at it and, and, and for myself I can say, okay, this is, this is energy, or well, this could be about birth. This is a birth of something, the beginning of something. Mm -hmm. and, and the last one, you know, is, is in a way that the, 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 the energy is dispersing. Mm -hmm. It's the end, it's winter, it's death. Mm -hmm. Is it a sequence in a way that it is taken from one bucket of water no, falling no, down? No, no, e each one, each picture is separated by hours or perhaps even days, mm -hmm. but then reassembled mm -hmm. to give the idea of a chronology of an early, middle, and end. Mm -hmm. And I guess that these results are the results of a lot of other ones, of a lot of testings, right? Yes. Um, the, yeah, yeah, these are the, the best of the best. Why did you call it ARC? Because of the idea that this, from this one, this one drop forms a wave. And conceptually, that wave is infinite. And so within this one wave of water, you could, it would eventually, as it expanded, would, would contain everything. Mm -hmm. It would contain everything, all life, in the way that the ark, the boat, mm -hmm. contained all of the animal life. And also, the the idea um, you know these pictures have a uh, have a dark and a light side mm -hmm. almost the top and the bottom mm -hmm. and sometimes you could look at it and think of it as being the like a boat mm -hmm. that that form also the idea that 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 form is in water it rests on water like a boat and also with the idea that arc a R C, the mm -hmm. arc, the circle, mm -hmm. and the arc, A R K, the boat, have a have a meaning to be together. The spirals came out of uh, experimenting. I don't remember when I first thought to put a light on a pendulum, but, but I made a large series of work with black and white paper mm -hmm. with the pendulum and sort of creating a kind of dra a drawing uh, right. made up of circular forms. Right. And when I was doing those, I realized the potential to reduce it to one as we just spoke about the water, mm. again, it started with many, many, and, and, and then the idea came, well, why don't I just do one, let it be about one motion mm. of the pendulum, and also to do it on color paper, so the paper, color positive paper, mm. so the paper would respond the opposite to the way I'd been working with the black and white. Mm. And instead of getting darker in the center, it would get lighter. So I always looked at the color as being just a sort of pr primal thing. You know, it's, I want it blue, 
I make it blue, or I want it yellow, I make it yellow. Uh, and and mm. also with the idea that the extension of the color is white. Mm -hmm. So blue, blue at one end is black, and at the other end is white. Mm -hmm. Dark, dark, dark blue is black. Bright, bright blue is white. People ask me frequently if I'm interested in Man Ray, if his photogram work, whether that influenced me or attracts me, and it doesn't. And I think it's for that reason. Yeah. The objects he uses are very closed objects, a gun <coughs> mm -hmm. or typography, mm -hmm. a wine glass. You know, they're, they're very limited, whereas the idea of an egg or mm -hmm. a, a snake, you know, mm -hmm. it's just incredibly uh, mm -hmm. alive and broad and keeps mm -hmm. going. The sunflower, there is one large image of a sunflower that is also very early. You made it so big, it is more than life-size, seemingly. No, it's life-size. It is life-size. And that, I think of that picture as being the idea of the sun, mm -hmm. you know, the king. So it was it's again like really nature, even in an abstract dimension. Super nature. When did you have the idea to call the large series My Ghost? Was it clear from the beginning? No, the beginning, no, it wasn't actually. It was, it was only after I'd made a series of the pictures of the child's dress mm -hmm. that, uh, that I had the idea to call it that. I, um, I, I feel that most of the time I work just intuitively, so... Um, once I'd seen those pictures, then I had to make an effort to understand why I wanted to make them or what they were about. Mm -hmm. That's a secondary uh, process to the primary process, which is just the making. Mm -hmm. And frequently it's in conversations like this that I, I have a sense intellectually of, 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 a con of connections or meaning Mm -hmm. because I'm not interested in the meaning of the picture. I'm interested in making the picture, mm -hmm. the, the meaning or a possible meaning mm -hmm. or my meaning is a secondary event. With the photogram, you work at things at, at life scale. Mm -hmm. So the baby is the scale, scale of the baby. Mm -hmm. The smoke is... You know, that's what you need to have quantity of smoke. It. Right. The picture of the woman is the size of the woman. It's mm. one to one. So the material determines the scale of the photogram. Mm. I mean, if I was interested to make photograms of flies, mm. I wouldn't make them big. Mm. I'd make them fly size. Mm. If we come to the babies for a moment, uh, they have these beautiful colors, so they have the beautiful brown skin and they are like seemingly in a, in a very sunny water. They are really under the sun. But then you have these darker spots on their bodies. And uh, it sometimes came to my mind, it, people could think that these children were x-rayed uh, with the photo light. How does it happen that some of the parts of the bodies are darker than others? The, the child is, is sitting on the photographic paper, lying on the photographic paper, and, and the child and the paper in water. The child's moving, moving the water. When the body lies on a flat surface, only parts of the body touch the paper. Mm -hmm. Actually, a small, small part of the body touches the paper. Mm -hmm. In those areas, no light goes on the paper, where the okay. skin okay. of the buttock okay. is pressing on the paper. Mm. No light goes there, so mm. that's black. It mm. receives no light. Okay. Everything else really is in a kind of shadow and may receive a, 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 a indirect light. Mm. The direct light, as you said, is, is, is solar, mm -hmm. bright. 
So, so nature seems to help then to raise the drama, right? You know, it, it, it's very interesting. In some of those pictures, that shape, that black shape in the, in the baby <clears throat> takes on an appearance of a drawing mm -hmm. of a man. Mm -hmm. Not a baby, but mm -hmm. an adult. Now you, you start, let's say, your portraits with skulls. Well, what does that mean? Just the obvious. So the end of the exhibition is death? No, not at all. The, if, you, if you look at those pictures, what you see is yourself, your living self. Mm -hmm. And there's an image of, of a skull of death. So um, certainly, you know, for the living to be in front of the idea of death is a way uh, to live, uh, to to live, mm -hmm. you know, to be mm -hmm. uh, to be really alive. So, I don't think of those images as being about death. I think of them as purely, sort of aids in a way for the living. So it's a mirror. If you can see it, mm. yes. Mm. Should we stop here? Up to you, boss. That's it.